When looking at a map of France, you'd probably think it looks pretty normal and that there isn't anything odd about it. But if you look a little bit closer, you'll find a Spanish city completely surrounded by France, a French island just a few miles off the coast of Canada, and a whole lot more. So what's going on here? Well, let's start with the border between France and the Netherlands. You might not think that they share a border with each other, but they actually do, and it's made possible by this divided island in the Caribbean. This island is St. Martin, and it's divided because all the way back in 1493, Christopher Columbus discovered the island and claimed it for Spain. But Spain wasn't really interested in the island, and so they let the French and Dutch use it. They were interested in the island for the salt mines and the strategic location. After seeing how successful St. Martin was to the French and Dutch, and wanting to maintain their control of the salt trade, Spain now wanted to take the island as their own. And so they did in 1633, driving all the French and Dutch colonists off the island. But at the end of the 80 years war, Spain no longer needed it, and so they left. This prompted the French and Dutch to come back to the island. Both sides fought to have the island for their own, but they quickly came to the realization that neither side was going to give it up, and so they divided the island between each other. This border stuck, and it's still here today. Moving up north, we have a couple of French islands that are only a few miles off the coast of Canada called St. Pierre and Miquelon. This island is French because all the way back in the 16th century, mainly French fishermen came here to fish. This was something they would only do seasonally, so it wasn't until the late 1600s when they would set up a permanent settlement there. But then in 1713, St. Pierre and Miquelon was transferred to Britain as a result of the Treaty of Utrecht. But after the Seven Years' War, France was then given back these islands. Well, that was until the Revolutionary War, when Britain was mad at France for siding with America, and so they took back the islands and destroyed all the homes on it, causing all the French settlers to flee back to France. But France took it back in 1796, and the islands would start to finally be repopulated again with French fishermen in 1816. Moving east to France, there is a Spanish city completely surrounded by France. This town is called Yivia, and it became separated from Spain in 1659 after the Treaty of the Pyrenees. This treaty stated that all villages north of the Pyrenees would become a part of France, and just like the other surrounding villages, this should have meant that Yvia would have become a part of France. But this didn't happen because Yvia was historically the capital of Cerdanya, and so it was given the status of a villa or a town, and not a village. And since the treaty specifically stated that villages would become a part of France, Yvia stayed a part of Spain and still is today. Something that is a part of Spain, but won't be for much longer, is Pheasant Island. You see, this island switches ownership from France to Spain every Every six months. This anomaly once again can be traced back to the Treaty of the Pyrenees. At the end of the Thirty Years' War, Spain and France signed this treaty on Pheasant Island, and so as a symbol of peace, the two sides decided that this island would switch sovereignty from Spain in February to July, and to France in August and January, and so ever since then, it switched countries over 700 times. But something that might be even weirder is this part of South America still being a part of France. And so if you want to find out why, click here. Thanks for watching.